Chancellor Belcher, what were your expectations coming to Western Carolina and how have things been up to this point so far? I expected uh, to find a university that was really ready to move forward in very difficult circumstances. Uh, certainly I knew that the, the university, that Western Carolina University was uh, in a, certainly a great location, that it had lots of great faculty and staff who were passionate about the students, that it had a very, very fine student body that's been growing both in terms of numbers and in terms of quality over recent years. I knew I was inheriting a really great physical plant, uh, that there were a lot of dreams for the university, but simultaneously uh, I was very much aware that there were fiscal challenges in the state of North Carolina and that it was going to be a, um, a challenge, I think, for all of us uh, in the Western Carolina community to balance some of, some of the dreams we have for a, a university with such promise with some of the realities that we're, that we're currently facing. And that's exactly what I have found. I think knowing that, you know, coming into a community like uh, Cullowee and Western Carolina University, knowing it is one thing, experiencing is something else. And I've been really gratified that the people here have, uh, in fact, embraced the challenge. There are hopes and dreams. People are, would love to see a stronger economy, which could mean, mean all kinds of things, but people still believe in this place and are willing to work uh, extremely hard uh, to achieve some of the dreams on behalf of the university and the students and the region that the university serves. So it's been, it's been gratifying, uh, as I said, to, have, to find a group of colleagues here who are, are willing to go shoulder to shoulder with me in tackling some of these challenges that we have. Have you achieved some of those goals, and what mm -hmm. goals do you have in the future? Sure. Uh, one of the big goals uh, that I had for the university this year was strategic planning, and that's a year-long process. We are we are in the midst of that. We have, I think, done as much as we possibly could given the short time frame we've had. Uh, we've had a number of roundtable discussions on campus with people from the, from the campus itself. We've done a listening tour out in the communities uh, that we serve to talk to people about their hopes and dreams for Western Carolina. Uh, not to mention some, you know, if they had concerns, we wanted to hear those things as well. So that process is ongoing. In the next few weeks, I imagine that we'll be hearing from the, from the Strategic Planning Steering Committee about some of the, uh, the strategic directions that they are going to propose that we follow in the university in the coming years. But my, my goal in focusing on strategic planning was to help us, in fact, uh, sort of get real, if you will, about the, the situation that we find ourselves in. We don't have tons and tons of money and discretionary funding, so we're going to have to pick and choose what it is we're going to do. And so that's been the part of the process uh, that, that's guided some of the process that we've been following in the strategic planning is to help us really focus ourselves. And that process, I'm extraordinarily pleased with how well that uh, in particular is going. Another piece of, uh, of my uh, management style that I have been hoping to bring to Western Carolina is to, uh, ha to engage the community in a more transparent decision-making process. And we have made some good strides in that in my first months. I think there's a lot more that we can do. Uh, but one, an example would be the establishment of the Chancellor's Leadership Council, which uh, is a large body and certainly includes administrators and the deans, the vice chancellors. But it also in, in involves staff leadership, faculty leadership, and student leadership. And the point is to bring this, this group of campus leaders representing all the constituents together on a regular basis to talk about the big issues, to talk about the budget, which is challenging, to talk about policy issues which might be coming up, and give people an opportunity not only to understand processes, but to grapple with the, the decisions and the issues themselves, which in fact then informs the process of decision making on campus. This uh, fall we have had uh, a very robust conversation about uh, proposed increases in tuition and fees. We have put together a very transparent process uh, which is um, where a, a committee made up of five students and five employees of the institution work together, hold listening sessions to get feedback and input into proposals 
and it has been remarkably helpful. Some, you know, I, the proposals that we were seeing at the very beginning have in fact morphed somewhat because of the conversations that we're hearing, particularly from the students. So that's, a, that's an example of a way that I've, I've hoped that transparency will become part of the culture of the institution. Now, I want to touch on that real quick. Uh, it, it has been announced that there will be a tuition increase for the next year. What has been the reaction of that so far? You said the students have really been uh, voicing their opinions on that. What, right. what have they been saying? Well, first of all, let me say there's no decision has been made yet. In fact, the process is a very long one. We, the, 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 com the committee that I just talked about comes with, up with a recommendation that it makes to me. And in fact, that recommendation comes to me tonight, uh, <laughs> which is uh, November the uh, 28th. Then I am going to w w wrestle with the recommendation that comes to me and will make a recommendation to the Board of Trustees, who in turn will make a recommendation to the Board of Governors. So there, I, I just want to make it clear we, the decision hasn't been made. But one of the big challenges that I mentioned uh, is, is a fiscal one for our university. And uh, we have lost at, at uh, Western Carolina University over $30 million in the last three years. And we've, I think, as an institution, grapple with that pretty well. But it is a, a sort of a white-knuckling experience to lose that kind of money. We're worried about students being able to even put together a schedule because we've had to reduce the number of classes because we've eliminated so many faculty lines. And so what we've been looking for is a way to uh, to help offset some of the challenges that we've had in terms of, 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 uh, of, the, of the funding we have for, for the institution. The general administration has allowed us the opportunity to um, play, have a catch-up, a one-time catch-up uh, with student, uh, with tuition and fees. Um, and I'll explain that briefly. Typically, there's a ceiling on how much uh, a university can request in terms of tuition and fees. It's 6.5% of the existing tuition and fees. The catch-up that we're being, that's being discussed currently uh, is the difference between what we currently charge and what the lowest quarter of our peer institutions, what their, that sort of average is for that group of institutions. For uh, for Western Carolina University, that's a $1,300 gap. For Chapel Hill, it's a different amount of money. It's around $2,800. So the catch-up is, is, amount is different from institution to institution depending on who our peers are. We've been talking about trying to take advantage of general administration's uh, allowance uh, to request that catch-up but not doing it all at once because it would just be huge. So we've been talking about how to spread it out over several years. Uh, we've, we've talked, I think the first uh, iteration of the proposed tuition and fees that went out was possibility of spreading it out over four years. We're now looking at five years. We're also even looking at sort of phasing it in a little bit gradually so that the increase won't be as bad, say, in year one as it might be in year three. The, what we're trying to deal with here is we're trying to balance how we ensure that the students uh, get a first-rate quality education but not pricing them out of, the, out, out of getting an education. It's an access issue. We want our students to be successful. We want them to have the best possible education that they can find. But at the same time, we don't want to charge them so much. So we're, we, too, are really wrestling with what we're doing here. Uh, we're talking about perhaps uh, increasing the amount of money out of new tuition dollars, uh, dedicating more of that increase toward financial aid to help some students who might be, pro you know, have, have struggles with the, with the tuition and fees if we do increase them so much. So those are some of the issues that we're grappling with right now. Um, I think one of the things that sticks in my mind is that the um, bitterness associated with a, a low quality product will far outlast the temporary sweetness of cheap. And so I know that that's a hard pill to swallow, but our goal in North Carolina is to ensure that we're giving a first rate education. And we're trying to grapple that with that in such a way that it really doesn't hurt the students or it hurts the students as little as possible. And see, I think that's one of the things that not a whole lot of people understand, they, they hear of a tuition increase and, and it scares them a little bit. But like you said, 
they get a quality education at this place, and Western Carolina is still one of the lowest in the state. It's one of the lowest in the state, and in fact, U.S. News & World Report uh, in its uh, publication this fall has indicated that Western Carolina is among the, to the top five uh, institutions in the entire South in terms of affordability. And they define affordability as the amount of debt that students leave the institution with when, once they graduate. Well, we're in top five in the nation. Now, that doesn't mean that it, our students won't hurt if, if we raise tuition and fees. They will. I, I, I just can't back off from that. We are a very good bargain. I just don't want to make sure, I want to make sure that, in, it, that low costs don't translate into mediocre quality. We're an institution that is very strong, we have great faculty, and we have attracted great students. And I want to make sure that that continues into the future. So it's, it, this, it's an example of the kind of issues that we struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis to try to ensure that quality education. And you mentioned the listening tour a little bit earlier, and you actually have a stop tomorrow just uh, right up the road with the Eastern Band Cherokee. Right. Uh, what have you heard so far, and uh, have you changed your game plan up for a little bit from what you've heard from some of these local communities, and uh, and what can you see moving forward after listening mm -hmm. to what they have to say? Uh, the, 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 the schedule of tours has just been really great for me. I mean, I'll just say up front that it's provided uh, my wife Susan and me the opportunity to meet a lot of people who are sort of in the Western Carolina family. And uh, it's also introduced us to the state that we're serving. And it's been exhilarating. It's been overwhelming to some extent. One of the things that we're finding across the listening tour area is that people want access to education where they live. And uh, there are four, besides Cullaway, there are three areas that I think in, in western North Carolina that really sort of stick out in terms of, of really uh, having a particular call for educational services. One is out in the corner of, of North Carolina, uh, Murphy in that area. There are businesses, there are educational programs both in the community college level and in the public school system where people want access to educational services that we offer. Then Cherokee is an area that has, we've had a long history of offering courses in, in Cherokee and there, seem, there is a, an apparent need, certainly a call for, for greater offerings at Cherokee. But one of the largest areas, probably the largest area outside of Cullowee, would be the uh, Asheville Hendersonville area in the I-26 corridor. That's an area that has uh, a lot of enroll of uh, population growth and the, uh, the greater Asheville area simply has a lot of educational needs. That area is in our uh, service uh, ca catchment area and uh, we would be the natural uh, professional and graduate program provider for those areas. We have, be have been a strong presence in the Asheville area for a, a number of years and we only see that continuing to grow. Working, I, I must say, with our partners at UNC Asheville, uh, a liberal arts institution, a very fine school, but working in partnership with our, with our colleague institutions. Another issue that we continue to hear is, is how we need to have very strong relationships with the community college system. And we have very strong community colleges in North Carolina in general, and there are five that are really particularly close to Western Carolina, though there are you know, 58 uh, of them across the state. And providing students who complete an associate's degree who have the, uh, the long-range career trajectories to pursue a four-year degree, we should be an avenue for those students in the Western North Carolina area. So those are some of the, it really has a lot to do with access to uh, educational opportunities. And then there are some areas that we, we hear a lot that people want us to be engaged in, and that is offering health care programs because health care is big and then serving as a catalyst for economic development. Okay, and one of the things, you know, about Dillsboro, mm -hmm. you got the, the night in Dillsboro coming up. Did you see something special in Dillsboro that you wanted to continue helping that town out? The Dillsboro has uh, has has had some particular struggles in the last few years, and and I the the, the Dillsboro initiative predates my uh, chancellorship here at Western Carolina University. But uh, the programs that Western Carolina, and it's not just faculty and staff, but students have been involved as well, have, have really, I believe, facilitated um, a strengthening of the local economy in the Dillsborough area. Uh, Western Carolina cannot 
and, and should not be in the business of going in and sort of taking over a town. But what we have seen ourselves is doing is to become involved in providing guidance and advice and partnership with Dillsboro as it has, uh, as it looks to reviving uh, the, its, its economy. And I think that that's what you're seeing here is a, a university that has not only worked hard to do that, but has been accomplishing it. And you know, over time, this, this uh, whole initiative sort of will turn back over to the citizens. But I think to the extent that we could be a partner with the citizens of Dillsboro, it has been a successful venture. Okay, and I want to talk a little bit about the economy. You, know, you said uh, that's one of the things you really want to focus on is, is a strong economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually just today, um, it was approved that live card play could be, is going to be coming to the casino there in Cherokee. Uh, so that could, we could really be seeing a increase in, uh, in guests and things like mm -hmm. that in the area. Mm -hmm. And also, um, this may the, potentially the voting on countywide alcohol sales mm -hmm. could also bring businesses into the area. Mm -hmm in the Cullowee area. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that these are, you know, as you point out, that the, these, the, the two issues you're talking about with the card play at, at Harris and sort of the alcohol uh, referendum in the spring, those are a piece really of a, of a broader uh, uh, hospitality and tourism uh, component to which is already pretty strong in Western North Carolina. I think for for Western Carolina University, when we look at economic development, I think we have to look at the region as a whole, see where the, the region sees itself going, and take advantage of the natural assets that are here. I don't, at this point, uh, presuppose knowing what all of those things are going to be. But the hotel and tourism industry is, the hospitality tourism industry is pretty strong here already. Um, there are opportunities, I think, for, for our university to play big roles in, in the healthcare industry, which can also be strong uh, economic development drivers. We have an engineering program that is needed in this area as well. And I think that there's a lot to be said for taking advantage of one of the real treasures that's in this area, and that's the incredible biodiversity of this area. We live in one of the, in the most biodiverse areas in North America. And we have great partners at the Highlands Biological Station, the North Carolina Arboretum, and I think it, it behooves us to explore what potential partnerships we might be able to form with those pre-existing uh, entities in development of this part of, 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 the, uh, of the state of North Carolina. Okay, and I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, one of the big things that have been a lot of people's focus in the last few months is athletics here at Western. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there have been, there have been several changes so far, you know, uh, one, probably the biggest one of uh, the athletic director changes. Mm -hmm. What exactly did you see, and why did that change need to be made when it was made? Well, I, I my, my feeling about athletics, first of all, is that it's a very important uh, part of, uh, a, of a university community. It certainly has a long history and tradition of being an integral part of the Western Carolina University experience. And I look to have uh, excellence in athletics just like I believe in having excellence in academics. It's, it's not just so we can have winning teams. I really love to win. <laughs> I want competitive teams and I want winning teams. But it's because it's a part of the student experience. And let me back up a little bit on this. One of the big pushes in, in, uh, at Western Carolina University is, is sort of encapsulated by the phrase student success. Well, student success means a lot of things to me. It certainly means success in the classroom. It means retention. It means making sure students st stick it out and graduate. But student success has a lot to do with, it has to do with more than just what happens in the classroom, as important as that is, and that is very important. But part of, of, a, of, the, of an educational, a well-rounded educational experience is student life. And uh, the research all indicates that students that are grounded in a student life, grounded at an institution, are actually retained at greater uh, percentages and graduated at higher percentages than those students that are not. I see athletics as a real component of that. It, it grounds the student body in the institution. It's clearly a way of, uh, it brings great visibility, it grounds uh, our donors and our friends and our alums at the institution, but it really is a part of student life. So, I believe in student success. I believe in retaining and graduating students. 
And that means that I believe in doing those things to help in those, in those initiatives. So I want a strong athletics program. And uh, I, in looking over the situation that we had and that, that was here, I feel that we can do better than we have done. And so, in my opinion, uh, leadership uh, was uh, an issue that we needed to address. Okay, and one of the things you did do with a little bit of bridging student, student life and athletics was you led all of the freshmen <laughs> Uh, on the on the field, running out of the cat head for the first home game, and, and I know I talked with you about it earlier in the year, and I've talked with TJ about it. That's one of the traditions you wanted to start here. Right. Um, it, I'm sure we'll see that continue. But is there any other traditions that you have in the in the working wing right now? So far, that's that that's the one that that we've got under under our belts right now, and the students loved it. I think it's a way of getting with getting all the freshmen out there, getting them to a football game, and I think it can become a tradition that can sort of help build some student spirit, grab the freshmen right as they come onto campus. That's the one we've got sort of uh, in the in uh, in the category of tradition. Others, I think, will evolve as the as the course of my first year goes on, but uh, that's the only one I've nailed down so far. Okay, well, Chancellor Belcher, I appreciate your time, and best of luck for your many days ahead. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.